All right, here's a really cool concrete countertop that we coated with stone coat countertop epoxy. In this video, we're going to show you the entire process of how to make concrete counters look like just something out of this world. Boy, this was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy the video and visit us at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Enjoy the video. Okay guys, Mike here with StoneCoatCountertops.com. What we're gonna do today is we're going to take this concrete countertop, it's completely raw, nothing's been put on it, and we're gonna show you how to apply stone coat countertop epoxy to a concrete surface. Um, we poured this little concrete countertop so that we could give you an example of how this works exactly, but the big thing that you need to do is make sure that the moisture is out of the concrete. So the way that we do that is we actually uh, put this on last night, um, and, and it's just a piece of thick plastic, and you tape it down so it's sealed all the way around, and if concrete is leaking moisture, it's gonna get trapped by this plastic so that when we peel this off, you would see some moisture trapped here. But you can see that's really dry, and that's exactly what you're looking for. So if your question is, how do I know the moisture's out? That's how. You need to tape down a piece of plastic, let it sit overnight, and come back and peel that. If you still have moisture there, then you don't wanna start this process. You wanna wait for your brand new counter to cure enough to uh, start applying these products. So let's go ahead and get started here. This is, this is a, a, a cool little sample that we're gonna do, but what it's gonna have is, is, is out of the um, mold, the edges are kind of sharp. You have some pits and divots and those kind of things. And so the first thing that I do is I take my sander with like 150 grit sandpaper, and I'm just gonna sand off these sharp corners and just get this more, uh, more user friendly as a countertop surface. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Okay, we got this all sanded up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply a skim coat of our stone coat countertop epoxy, a seal coat. And when we do that, we mix up about one ounce per square foot of counter. Is I'm just gonna take some black spray paint and just dress up the edges just a little bit. So I'm just fogging them on some black spray paint around those edges because the edges is what loses most of the material. There we go. We'll let that dry, and then we'll come, uh, we'll come put our seal coat on. And one thing you want to remember, too, is you can use non-sanded grout if you'd like to fill in those bug holes and pinholes from your concrete. You can use non-sanded grout and wipe that, but, but you're adding moisture to the uh, product again, so you got to make sure that you, you make sure it's dry before you do these next steps. Okay, so I got some some of our stone coat countertop epoxy mixed up and I've put some black metallic uh, powder in there. And now I'm just gonna scrape this out on the surface. And again, this is just our seal coat. You don't need, uh, you don't need a lot. You're just sealing those pores. Um, and, and this is an extra step on raw wood or raw concrete. Be uh, typically you'll go right into your first color coat, your first flood coat but we're not gonna do that. We just apply a little bit of material so that we can, we can uh, make sure that all those pores are sealed and we don't get bubbles that keep coming up into our flood coat surface. This is just a squeegee that I use. It's made to clean showers um, with, with glass, but uh, this is what I'm gonna use just to spread this out nice and tight. So you can see it, you, you're putting it on just very thin. You're gonna cover this whole surface here just to create a nice sealed surface. And that black looks cool going on there. All right. Yeah, and that Bondo did a really good job sealing those bug holes. I can still see some air coming up through it, but less than normal with raw concrete. Okay, so I got that with the squeegee. Now I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna come brush this and get some on these edges too. And all I'm doing with my brush is I'm just grabbing a little bit off the edges. I can actually come right in here to my bucket, steal what's left. I'm just gonna paint these edges real good. 
And the fact that I already put some black on those edges really helps you. And the seal coat's going to look ugly. Don't worry about that. All we're really trying to accomplish is put a base color down and then uh, seal those pores. This is kind of cool. It's giving it a grain look. Almost looks like wood. <laughs> That's really neat. Ooh, I like that. You learn something new every day working with this stuff. So if you like this undertone look, you can just simply uh, see what I'm doing now is I'm creating stripes. So I'm going to go all the same direction. Let's just go this whole this way every time and it won't have stripes. Oh, yeah, very cool. All right, we'll let that dry, and we'll come back and uh, do our first flood coat after that's uh, dry. Let me torch that a little bit. Okay, that's just going to get in there and seal those pores. I can see little air bubbles wanting to happen, and that's real normal because it's concrete and it's really porous. You may even need to do two seal coats. Just make sure that it's completely sealed before you start your your flood coats or else you get those dots that never never go away. Okay, here on our concrete countertop, we've let that first seal coat completely dry. We come back the next day, it's nice and dry, and I could see little pits and divots and, and little chunks and all that stuff through this top, and that's totally normal on a seal coat. So when you see that, don't worry about it, it's okay. And this color really looks cool with that grained effect over the original concrete. And what I like about that and how we accomplish that is we just added a little bit of black metallic to our sealer and we used our brush and we just did this. Now, if you like that look, you could sand this and just start applying your flood coats and you'll retain that look. We're gonna do something a little bit different, but that's a really neat effect. So I just wanted to point that out. First thing we're gonna do here, because it's dry, if this was still tacky, we could apply the next coat without sanding, but because it's dry, we're gonna sand with 220 just to give a good mechanical bond so the next coat has a really good bond. So I'm gonna just put on my little respirator here. We'll sand it. That's all you need to do when you're sanding is just uh, just rough it up a little bit and all those sanding marks will totally be gone once we apply that next coat of stone coat counter epoxy it just uh, just totally disappears so don't worry if you scratch it up and abrade it it's not gonna hurt your piece uh, just just do your next coat okay we just mixed up our stone coat countertop epoxy if you haven't seen how we mix it up, go and watch our video on how to mix stone coat counter epoxy and you'll see exactly how we do it, how we trowel it out and how we chop it. That's really important to get a good consistent countertop. Uh, watch that and you'll, you'll really do a great job. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I just have the clear mixed up and I'm gonna actually put a black metallic in part of this and a white metallic in the other part. First, we're gonna lay down black and then we're gonna put some white over it and meld the two together and see how it comes out. So I have a couple of little red Solo cups here. We're just going to split this up 50-50 um, and, and see what happens. This is going to be a fun little project. Get my mixing stick here and scrape this out. Let me grab a new one. Scrape that out right there. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is just add a little bit of black. And uh, these colors that we have on our site, these will tint up to two gallons of epoxy. They're very, very strong. And so you don't need a lot when you're, um, when you're adding them into your cup, just a little bit. Um, and, and, and you could always add more if you'd like. Actually going to take my stick here a little bit. Let's mix that up with the stick. See how concentrated that is? That's really pretty. All right. So I'm going to pour this out on my top. Let's go ahead and mix our white. So why did you lay it out on the top? Well, you don't want to leave the material sitting in the cup too long because it generates heat and it'll it'll less your working time. You you want to keep as much working time as you as you can, so you get everything put on the surface just as soon as you can. Another thing you want to make sure it, it, don't don't pour these out in direct sunlight. Don't don't take them from your work area and go outside right in direct sunlight because that the sun will really uh, shrink your working time as well. So just make sure you do it inside in shade and uh, and get it out on the surface as soon as you can. All right. So I got that mixed up. Let's use our trowel and uh, trowel this part out. Okay. We got that trowel out. Let me get a brush. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour this white out. Now the key when you do this is you want to mix the two, but you don't want to over mix them or else it all becomes the same color. You want to leave some of it done in black and some of it done in white. Now this is going to be a little different technique than we normally do but we're just trying something different just to show you what it can do. I'm just going to use a brush to kind of get this out. Get this whole thing coated. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Brush those edges. Just use some of that for the edge. All right. I'm going to use that torch and move this around a little bit, see what happens. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Bondo squeegee and we're just going to meld this a little bit more together. One second. Okay, this is just our normal little Bondo spreader and we're just going to take and, and just skip trowel the top surface. Just, just move it just a little bit. Try to get rid of some of these brush marks here. Just do this. Just give it some really cool looks here. That's kind of cool. Just go over itself. I'm just using very light pressure here, very light. And that's a really neat look. And I think we'll, we'll leave that alone. We'll come back in a minute and see what it looks like. That's cool.
Yeah, let's do that. So it flattens it out? Well, what's neat right now is this is very flat. It just looks like it has ridges, too. 